Steam has updated their privacy settings. Now you can actually hide the games that you own from other people. Now it will default to friends only, and so you actually have to set it to public if you want everyone to know about it. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And also, you can end up hiding the amount of hours you have on the game. They also confirmed they are working on an invisible mode, which basically makes it so you're online, but people don't see that you're online, which... Why they haven't had that forever, I don't freaking know, because I use offline mode all the time. Michael here with another topic video. So Steam and privacy has been a weird subject for a lot of people because they don't really have a lot of privacy settings. And for the longest time, as in since Steam existed, you've been able to look at profiles and see quite a bit of information, including like location and where people live, which is kind of scary for a lot of people. I mean, you can just not input that information and that's perfectly fine. I personally have it up there because it's on my website anyway, so not like I care, but for a lot of people that can be quite concerning. And one of the things that was actually really concerning that you couldn't hide, however, without buying, you know, not buying games on Steam or not playing absolutely anything is the games that were on your account. So basically now Steam has actually finally updated it based on a lot of user feedback. I've actually seen people request this feature a lot and I've actually thought about using this feature as well to where now they've actually made it so that you can hide your games that you own. And the kind of controversial bit that they did to this, however, is that the default before was just public. And so it would just have it so that it just showed everyone your games, right? Because you weren't able to hide them before. Now they've defaulted it so that it's hidden to a public and now it can only be viewed by friends. Now, there's a few problems to this and we'll get onto that later, but I also want to talk about why I kind of thought that hiding games was a good idea and why I kind of don't now. And, you know, that's mostly going to be specific to me and it's not going to be specific to the majority of people because for the majority of people, these privacy settings are pretty awesome. Also, they're adding in that privacy mode as well, which is going to be quite nice for me personally, because personally, I I don't like being shown on Steam because Steam, for as much as it's a, you know, game storefront and it actually has a lot of cool community features, I don't use any of them. And my friends list just has a bunch of random people on there and anybody can just go and view me. Anybody can just go and message me and I kind of want it that way. But I always appear offline because for one, I don't want notifications. And number two, I don't want people to see the games that I'm playing. And that's not because I'm like embarrassed about the games I play. People people know I play a lot of lewd games. So it's, it's not like that's new. All right. I published a freaking Skyrim adult mod. Of course I do. But, you know, so I'm not embarrassed by my game selection. However, since I get review keys for certain games, there's certain games that I don't want to promote that way. Maybe it's a game that just sucks. Maybe it's a game that I'm not going to be looking at in the future. Or maybe it's a game that is like in beta phases or something like those lines and i just don't want to show people that game and have people look at me and be like oh hey like is that that's a good game right he's playing he plays good games so he must be playing a good game right guys and then they go and buy it i actually had a friend one time to where he saw i was playing a game he's like oh is that game good and he did it every single time and then ever since i started showing up offline i have never heard from him again which is kind of sad unfortunately obviously he just wanted me for recommendations. He found my YouTube channel and then found my Steam page, which is a little bit awkward. I'm sure that's going to happen more in the future as they get bigger and bigger, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so like, it's for me personally, I, I kind of thought about it. However, I like the transparency of having games available to like have people view because I like having my library so that people can look at my library, not necessarily looking for recommendations because, you know, being able to view my entire library, that's not a big deal. So personally, I will be using the invisibility mode whenever that comes out. They said it will be in a, uh, or into the beta phases soon and so we should see it pretty soon i would assume probably in the next one or two steam updates that end up rolling out which they roll out like once a week or something like that so expect it within the next month and so i'll be using that so i won't it won't show me online on steam but whenever i'm there if you end up finding me on steam just message me and i can you know go ahead and talk to you i guess i don't know we mostly use discord now so if you want to actually chat with me go on our gaming discord link in the description it's called the broken chat box but I won't be using the hide games profile option. And there's a few kind of negative sides to it as well. And the reason I'm not going to is because I like the transparency, you know, obviously I do reviews on games and stuff like that. And so I don't want to hide the games on there. You can also hide the amount of hours you have on there. The hours counter is completely inaccurate anyways. Like for the example, it says that I have over a thousand hours on Skyrim. That's not actually true. I have like a thousand hours on freaking creation kit because I leave it open all the time while I'm working on stuff and just completely forget about it. Or there's been several times to where I would leave it on while I'm at work because I'm just too lazy to close it. And I have it like bookmarked at a certain spot or something. So it's inaccurate. And pretty much all of my games for the most part have inaccurate timers. So I don't really think that's a big deal. But what are the negatives to this? Well, the negatives is, and I, I'm going to try and put this in the thumbnail, but they're probably going to end up killing off services like Steam Spy. So Steam Spy end up is like a 
kind of steam crawler, I guess is what you would call it. It is a crawler, essentially. And so what it does is it actually goes through and connects and finds a lot of data about all these other things. What's it going to make me do here? Oh, I don't want to play as a random character. Screw that. Um, I don't want to do the same level over again. Ah, oh, God, I haven't played this game in forever, so I don't know what levels to play. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, they are actually crawlers. And so what they do is they go through the public profiles and then gather information. So they're able to get a bunch of really cool information, such as sales figures that devs don't end up releasing. They're able to kind of get achievements. They're able to get play times and et cetera, et cetera. And it's really interesting to see all that data and it's become a really good tool for not only, you know, people and gamers, but developers, especially. It's one of those features to where it's really, really nice to see what people are playing and what trends are going on and how much people actually play through certain games. Let's say you're making a really difficult platformer and then you like look at all the stats and you're like, oh, people don't really finish difficult platformers. Maybe I can end up you know, looking at that and improving my design based off of that. Or maybe there's certain achievements on certain games that people do specific things. You can end up using that data or sales figures. For example, when you end up being an indie dev, you can be like, all right, well, these types of games sell this well. So my expectation can be somewhere around here. And then you can budget for that. Incredibly useful tools. Now, there's some rumors that Steam is going to end up doing these on their own eventually, but I don't necessarily see it. I think this is actually just kind of a casualty that they're not necessarily kind of thinking about. I think it is mostly because people have been requesting this feature for a very long time. In fact, it's been at least four years because before I even made a Steam profile, people were asking for this feature. And so it's not exactly new. And I, it surprises me that it's taken them this long to actually implement it, which is, I mean, I guess it's fine. It's Valve. They take forever to do anything because somebody has to get motivated to do it first. But yeah, it's just, I don't think it's actually them being like, oh my God, we don't want them using our data or something like that. I think it's mostly just they wanted to implement a privacy system. But why does it make it so that these systems won't exist anymore? It's basically just because they can't channel crawl anymore. They can't go through or not channel crawl. Wow. Sorry, I'm used to channel crawlers and web crawlers, which are called channel crawlers um, because they channel through the internet and find channels. Um, but anyways, um, yeah. So like the reason it doesn't work is because they're not really able to like look through profiles anymore. Now, they can still view public profiles, and so they can still go through and see everyone like me that has gone through and made it public, but that's not enough data. And the actual amount of hoops that you actually have to go through to enable it to begin with is actually a pain in the rear. In fact, it took me forever to freaking find it. It took me over an entire minute to find it because I'm like, where is it? Is it in my Steam settings? And I went to my Steam settings. It's not there. And I was like, all right, where would it be next? And I looked it up on the blog post, and I tried to log in, and then it didn't go to it. It just went to my profile page. I'm like... Huh. And then on the profile page, I'm like, oh, there's profile settings. Like, I can actually alt tab right now. It's going to screw up my capture, but take up a second. No, wait, why? Okay, it's in window mode now. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to go to Steam. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, to actually change it, you have to go to your profile up in the top of Steam. You have to go to your profile, and then you have to wait for it to load. And then you have to say edit profile, right? And then you have to go to my privacy settings. And then right here, game details, right here. It defaults to friends only. Oh, I don't want to save it. <laughs> But I want to have it on public, you know, obviously. And so if everyone went through and did that, it wouldn't be a problem. Now, this is also going to affect the playtime calculators as well, because here it is. I'll always keep my total playtime private, even though users can see my game details. I, I don't know why I slurped on that, but I did. So, like, that's going to affect those crawlers quite a bit. Let's see if I can actually get... This took me, like, 17 tries to get this to capture properly, and so I kind of regret doing that. Come on, please. Please work. <laughs> it's not working. Please. You can see my mouse. Oh my God. Whatever. I just broke my capture. That's perfectly fine. Maybe I'll just play it in window mode now. Whatever. That'll work. That's fine. I don't want to screw with it because the video is almost over. Um, but yeah, so like if everyone went through and like made it public and didn't hide their hours, then it would be perfectly fine. And you'd never have to worry about anything. And the crawlers would work just like they always have. That's not going to be the case. In fact, most people aren't even going to know this change happened. And I think that's perfectly fine. The problem is that those types of stats are really useful to have, and it just kind of sucks. And I don't, like, again, I don't think Steam is doing this intentionally. I don't think Valve is like, oh my god, you can't be using this data. Because Valve themselves have been like, yeah, it's cool data. Like, they don't necessarily have all this data on track either. They're not going through and making all this data available. And I really hope they look at it and be like, hmm, maybe we can, like, look at some of these services and, like, get people on board and make this official. Because it would be really cool to have those stats officially. Because Steam Spy has always taken a little bit to actually be accurate. It's like, oh, hey, it's going to take us a day or two. 
or not even a day or two, it takes like two weeks or something like that to actually get semi-accurate data. And even then, we never knew for sure. We never knew if any of the stats were actually true because again, you know, what if people were hiding things? What if Steam didn't actually show all profiles when they were crawling? What if they had something in their algorithm incorrect or something along those lines? So like, it's not like it was always guaranteed, but if we actually were able to get the stats from Valve, that would be super freaking awesome. Chances of that happening, however, are not very likely. The reasons for that being is the fact that they have to go through and actually okay this with... Oh, God damn it! They have to okay this with all the developers that they have on, you know, contract and everything. Like, people that sign up to make that, you know, make all that content, they have to actually consent to that. I forget to take the shortcut again. God damn it. And so that's... It, it's gonna take in a massive amount of work, and even then... I don't know if Valve has all that information either. Obviously, it has stuff like sales data and et cetera, et cetera, but I don't think they have easy tracking methods. They would actually have to make their own tracker, their own like skimmer and everything to actually go through and get all that data, which I don't know if somebody in their team is willing to do. But again, obviously, they could end up doing it in the future. They finally implemented a privacy setting, so maybe we'll see it in six years. I mean, Obviously, they won't do a third iteration, but of course, they could end up doing it if we had no requesting it enough, which I know a lot of developers are, and Steam Spy definitely wants these stats available as well, because that's kind of what they did, and we thought they were awesome, and I kind of want them back too, so I'm going to go leave a comment in their forums if I'm not banned from a community monitor again, because that happens because I like Final Fantasy, and they get very mad about it. It's it's That's a long story. I'll get to it eventually in a vlog. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this one. And of course, you can leave your thoughts in the comments below. Will you be hiding your profile or will you just be leaving it on default, which is hiding your profile except to friends? You can actually make it so even friends can't find it. But honestly, I don't care because I don't know. I'm actually curious because they do have a community tab. I'm curious if on the community tab, it'll actually show like if you still bought because it like would show when you buy games. I wonder if it would still show that even if you're hiding your game. So then people could just look at your um, activity history and then just find the games that you've purchased. I mean, that's a roundabout way to do it. And I don't think anybody would actually care enough to do that. But if you're hiding your library, then you might have something to hide and then somebody might get curious. I don't I don't freaking know. I'm thinking of this from like, I don't know, my perspective, I guess. If somebody was like, hmm, this guy's shady. I wonder what game he's been buying lately. Um, yeah. Anyways, if you want to talk more about it, you can check out our gaming discord called the Broken Chat Box. Link in the description. We talk about gaming. We have gaming nights and stuff like that. I've been skipping the last few gaming nights, so I apologize for that, but I'll be getting back into it a little bit later. Um, I've just been busy with life stuff and going through some personal issues, but that's whatever. My personal stuff. And then, of course, you can end up checking out my website if you're interested in more of my stuff. It's currently going back into life issues. Um, I'm currently having some financial issues, and so my website might go down for a little bit, but it will be up again eventually. The domain's mine, so it's not like it's going anywhere. It's just that the website might go down for a week or two until I get my paycheck. So, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Apologies for that. But, yeah, go ahead and check that out. It has my blog on there and stuff like that. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter, etc., etc. See you guys in the next video. I forgot how fun this game is. Like, it's not great, it's just fun. <laughs> Which is what I could say about most Sonic games. Oh god, now I'm depressed. <laughs>